Solving equations with x on both sides, or with unknown values, as I've written here, unknown values on both sides, um, is not as hard as it first might appear. Let's look at an equation where we have an unknown value on, on both sides. Um, let's take 3x plus 4 equals x plus 10. 3x plus 4 equals x plus 10, and you'll see here we have, uh, unlike in previous examples, we have um, values for x on both sides of the equation. Now, of course, that's tricky because you because it's <laughs> you don't want to end up with an answer where uh, a situation where you're saying that x equals x because that's bonkers, isn't it? So what you really want to do is it, it, you don't really want x on both sides of the equation. You only want x on one side of your equation, so that you can end up by saying x equals something tangible like three or a million. Um, so given that we've got x on both sides but you only want x on one side, what's the logical solution? If you ask yourself a problem, I've got x on the left and on the right, and I don't want it on both sides, what would you do about that? Well, hopefully you're saying what I'm thinking, which is if I've got x on both sides and I don't want it on both sides, let's get rid of it from one side. So um, the solution to your problem here is to take the x's away from one side of your equation. Um, and we can actually take them away from either side. Uh, it'll, it'll work just as well either way. But my advice to you in this situation is to take away the smaller value of x. So here we have three lots of x on the left and one lot of x on the right, which is less three or one. <laughs> Duh. Let's take away that one lot of x on the right hand side. Um, of course, if we take away x from the right hand side, what do we have to do? That's right, we have to take it away from the left hand side as well to keep the equation balanced. So three lots of x on the left, take away one lot of x, it leaves us over here with two lots of x. Still got the plus four. And on the right hand side, the x is the x is gone, but we've still got the plus ten. So we have two x plus four equals ten, and that's more like something we recognise, isn't it? That's an equation we can solve quite easily. We'll take away that four from both sides to leave ourselves with two x on the left and six on the right. And if two x is six, we'll divide two x by two to find out what one lot of x is. And six divided by two is three. And there's your solution. Uh, and that's how you solve an equation with x on both sides. But let's let's work through a couple of examples. Um, here's another one. Uh, four lots of x minus two equals two lots of x plus seven. Why not? Okay, we've got x on both sides again. Which lot of x should we get rid of? We don't want x on both sides. We want only want one of them. So which one should we get rid of? Let's get rid of the smaller one. Which is smaller, four x or two x? Force 2x. So we'll get rid of that from there. If we do it over there, we have to do it on the left as well. 4x minus 2x is 2x. We've still got the minus 2, and we've still got the 7 over here, haven't we? Um, 2x minus 2 is 7. Let's get rid of the minus 2 by doing what? That's right, by adding 2 there. We have to do it on both sides to keep the equation balanced. So 2x equals 9. Divide both sides by 2 to find out what 1 lot of x is. 9 divided by 2. It's four remainder one, four and one half. There's your answer. Here's another one. Um, <laughs> ten minus five x equals two x plus hmm, three. Okay, x on both sides again. Be careful as you answer this question. Which side contains the greater number of x's? Well done if you're saying the right hand side. Because how many x's have we got on the right hand side? We've got two lots of x, right? And how many lots of x have we got on the left hand side? It's not 5x, it's minus 5 lots of x. And minus 5 is less than 2, isn't it? So let's get rid of that minus 5 lots of x. Okay? How do we get rid of minus 5 or something? Well, by adding 5, right? So let's add 5x to both sides. There we go. Now on the left-hand side, we've just got the 10 left because the x's are gone. And on the right-hand side, 2x plus 5x is 7x. And that's super duper. And um, we'll take away 3 from both sides to get rid of the plus 3 there. So 10 minus 3 is 7. So 7x equals 7. Divide both sides by 7 to find what one lot of x is. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So x equals 1. 
Um, let's just go back to one of the simpler examples. This example here, uh, let's just explore what happens if we don't take away the greater value of x. Just to put your mind at rest, really, and to reassure you that when you're solving equations, here's something to bear in mind. When you're solving equations, even if you take a wrong step, even if you do something that maybe wouldn't be the ideal thing to do to the equation, as long as you do it on both sides and do it, do it correctly, it's not fatal to your solving of the equation. It just might take you a little bit longer or it might be a little bit more complicated for you before you can solve it. So I, I repeat, if you do the wrong thing in an equation, then as long as you do it to both sides of the equation, as long as you change both sides of the equation in the same way, it's not going to be fatal to your ability to solve the equation as long as you do it correctly and accurately. Okay, let's do this one again. Um, instead of getting rid of the 2x on the right, let's get rid of the 4x on the left this time. We'll take away 4x here, and if we do that there, we have to do it here as well. So on the left-hand side, that leaves us with minus 2. On the right-hand side, 2x minus 4x is minus 2x, and we'll still get the plus 7 as well. Well, we've got minus 2x on the right, so we'll get rid of the plus 7 that goes with it to isolate it. Minus 2 minus 7 is minus 9. On the left and on the right, we've still got our minus 2x. And this is where it just gets a little bit more complex because um, anything that we've got here that's different is we've got negative values for x. And any time you're working with negative numbers, I tend to find, don't I, um, with, um, don't you probably, that, um, that your deep brain maybe doesn't enjoy working with negative numbers quite as much as it does working with positive numbers because right now we're not quite so used to negative numbers as we are to positive ones. But, I repeat, it doesn't mean you can't solve the equation because you know what you divide minus 2 by to get 1, don't you? If you divide minus 2 by itself to get 1, don't you? Minus 2 divided by minus 2 gives me 1. So minus 2x divided by minus 2 is 1x. And if we divide the right-hand side by minus 2, we divide the left-hand side by minus 2. The two negatives divided give us a positive. 9 divided by 2, 4 and a half. So you see, we still get the same answer. We still get x equals 4 and a half. It just was maybe a slightly more complicated or slightly um, trickier way um, of doing it. So... Um, there's um, that situation where we have to watch out for the negative values of x in the equation and don't be fooled into thinking they're positive ones. Um, let's do um, an equation with x on both sides with some brackets in as well. That's perfectly possible. 2 brackets x plus 3 close brackets. Let's make it even more fun. Minus 4 equals um, 5 brackets x plus 3, for those brackets, plus 3x. Wow, so exciting. Um, first things first, let's multiply out the brackets. On the left-hand side, 2 times x and 2 times plus 3. 2 lots of x is 2x, and 2 lots of plus 3 is plus 6. And the minus 4 is not part of the brackets, so we just bring it down, and we'll, and we'll incorporate that into the equation now. And on the right-hand side, 5 times x is 5x. 5 times plus 3 is plus 15, and we've still got that plus 3x at the end as well. We'll bring that in now. There's a certain amount of simplified of terms now that can go on this, isn't there? Um, remember when you're looking at this, to separate the two halves of the equation, and don't get into the mistake, make the mistake of thinking that your x is here, can be collected in with these ones here. They can't. You have to separate your equations by the um, equal sign. Um, so the x is on the left are separate at the moment, the x is on the right. Um, so we can't collect them all together. I'm just going to cut this out and rewrite it. So 5x plus 15 plus 3x. Uh, and we'll rub this out as well, just tidy it up again. Let's start again. So let's look at this now. OK, on the left-hand side, are there any like terms that we can collect? Well, I would believe that there are, because we've got a plus 6 here and a minus 4 here. We've got two integers that we can gather together. And on the right-hand side, are there any like terms over here that we can collect? Well, I believe that there are. Look. We've got 5x here and plus 3x here. So let's let's gather those terms together and see what we've got. On the left-hand side, we've got 2 lots of x, and then plus 6 minus 4 is plus 2. And on the right-hand side, we've got 5x plus 3x is 8x. So we've got that plus 15 as well. So we've got 2x plus 2 equals 8x plus 15. We've got x on both sides. What do we do? Get rid of the x's from one of the sides. Which one should we get rid of? Correct, we'll get rid of the smaller value of x, which here is the, the minus, is the 2x rather. So we'll take 2x away from both sides. On the left hand side, what have we got left? Just the 2. On the right hand side, we have 6x, so 8x minus 2x, 6x plus 15. 
Let's solve that equation by getting rid of the 15. If I take 15 away. Mm -hmm. 2 minus 15 is minus 13. On the right hand side, 6x. I've got 6x, I want 1x, so I'll divide by 6. Both sides. So x equals minus 13 divided by 6. When I divide a negative by a positive, what do I get? I get a negative answer. How many 6s go into 13? 2 remainder 1, so it's 2 and 1 over the number I'm dividing by. 2 and 1 6. So x equals negative 2 and 1 6. Look at that equation at the top. I bet you never thought you'd be able to solve something like that, did you? I bet you'd have looked at that a week ago and thought, blimey, O'Reilly. Um, actually, if you work through it step by step, and notice that I've shown, what, 1, 2, 3, we've got 4. We've got 5 lines of working here below the, below the question and including the answer. 5 lines of working, or if you prefer, 4 lines of working between the question and the answer. Um, there is absolutely no shame in setting out your working like that, step by step. In fact, it's a really, really good idea. Do it. Um, well, that's how you solve equations which have x on both sides, including equations which uh, include brackets.